You guys see my balloons? Can you guess why? Because it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> exactly what she said. Today we're gonna go over a really popular edit. I don't know if you've been on Pinterest or Instagram lately or just in general seen photos, but this light and airy kind of vintage bohemia style has become really, really popular. So not only am I going to teach you how to do that, I'm gonna teach you how to create a preset and I got something for you in the end. So let's get started. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you haven't been here and this is your first time, stay a while, take a seat, listen, might learn something. <laughs> Anyways, my name is Will. This is my channel where I teach you everything about photography from the ins, outs, the ups, downs, and everything in between. So today we're gonna go over this cool little edit. But first I want to go over kind of the style when you're taking the photo because there are a lot of times where you want to underexpose or overexpose or whatnot for a photo. For this style of edit, generally it's going to be outside, generally it's going to be a bright and sunny day, so you wanna expose for your subject. You're not too worried about necessarily the sky or anything because again, this is a bright and airy photo, so the sky most likely will be blown out. So in the case of this photo here, I took a picture of this couple at the beach and I shot it with uh, ISO 100 at a 50 millimeter, F 3.2 and a 1 1 1,000th of a second. Now you can see that the sky is overexposed, but there is enough detail that I could actually get the sky back. So just with a couple of tweaks, there I have the sky. Now again, for this type of edit, it doesn't matter. But get as much detail as you can. Obviously this is a raw image, but this one here, you'll notice that I exposed for them. That's the important thing. Expose for your subject when you're taking this kind of photo. Now, when you're in editing, we're gonna turn this photo into this photo here. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is go down to the calibration. Now the calibration, if you haven't seen it, I have a video on it. I'll link it in the description of this video so you can check out how the calibration works. It basically sets the colors, the tone of the colors. So you adjust the greens to look more like this and the blues to look more like this and the reds to look more like this and how they blend. It's basically setting the guidelines for how the colors are gonna look in the image. So the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the reds. We're gonna adjust the hues to about 24 and this is gonna give them more of an orangey look. So all the reds are gonna look a little bit more orangey. And then we're gonna adjust the saturation to 49, 50, something like that. This is going to intensify. It's going to bring in the saturation of all those colors. Now we're going to adjust the greens and we're going to set this to 45. This is going to make those greens look a little bit more green. So creating that contrast between the oranges and the greens. I'm not going to adjust the saturation. We'll leave that as is, but now we're going to adjust the blue and we're going to make it minus 10. Now adjusting the blue primary down will give you that orange and teal look that's super popular. So we're not going to do it much like if we did it all the way. Really? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if we did it all the way, you'll see a huge difference, but we don't want that much of an adjustment. So we're just going to do minus 10 just to get it exactly where we want. And now we've set the tone of our colors. So the next thing we're going to do is go up to the basic panel. Here is where we're going to make quite a few adjustments. The first thing is the warmth of this image. These images, this style is very warm. It has a lot of sun in it, I guess you could say. So we're going to adjust the warmth and we're going to adjust it to about 6,900, uh, maybe let's say 6,950. Okay, good. And then the tent, we're just gonna actually lower that down because if you look in these images, there's more green than pinks. So we're not, we, we still want, we don't want a green image like this. So we still want that magenta in there, but we are going to put it about plus 10. So there is a balance of greens to magentas. Now, once that's done, uh, this will be image specific. If your image is very bright, you might have to lower the exposure. If the image is really dark, you might have to raise the exposure. Again, image, image specific. Before we adjust the exposure though, we're gonna make the other tweaks. So we're gonna put the highlights down, get some details back. Uh, we're going to raise the shadows. Again, get those details back of the, of the couple. And let's just do 60, how about that? And then we're gonna do the whites and blacks. So whites, raise them up to 30 and then the blacks, we don't want any deep blacks. We want very low contrast in this image. So we're gonna raise it to about plus 22. 
Now it doesn't look that great yet, but we're getting there. The next thing we're gonna do is lower the clarity, which is we're gonna soften the image. So we're gonna lower that, not too much, cause we don't want it to be like that. <laughs> so we're gonna raise this to, we're just gonna put it at minus eight, minus 10, somewhere around there, find what you like. If you want a little bit more, a little bit less, totally fine. The next thing is the dehaze. All of this, we're just gonna add between plus two and plus five. So let's say plus three. What it'll do is it'll make your, your subject a little bit more clear, but you don't wanna go too much. Yes? Would you like to say something? <laughs> My headphones. <laughs> I don't even know how it's doing that. New Apple user, what can you say? Anyways, so you don't want to do too much dehaze because it'll make it look too bad. So stay between two and five. The next thing is saturation. So we're actually going to lower the saturation of the image to about minus 20. This just kind of evens things out and gives us that kind of vintagey look. All right, now we are going to move into the HSL. Uh, the HSL is hue, saturation, and luminance. This is where you adjust what the colors look like and how dark and bright they are, how much saturation each of them have. For this, we're gonna go to the hue first. Now we're gonna adjust the aquas and we're gonna raise them so they're more blue. We're gonna adjust the blues and lower them. It's kind of like counteracting themselves so it actually balances. Uh, then the purples we're gonna raise to 15 and the magenta we're going to raise also to 15. Now, once that's done, let's go to saturation. Now, this is where we make a few more, uh, quite a few tweaks. Again, desaturate the image. So, saturation. The reds we're gonna leave alone. Oranges, we're just gonna drop them just a little bit to minus five. Yellows, we're gonna pull a lot of yellow out. We're gonna go to minus 40. Green, we're gonna do minus 14. 15, let's say I like round, I like, I like um, whole numbers. <laughs> I can't say even numbers, because it's not an even number. Greens, we're gonna do minus 15. And then aqua, we're gonna do minus eight. Blues, we're gonna do about minus 20. Again, we're just pulling saturation out of this image and we'll bring it all back in a second. So let's do minus 21, sure, why not? Um, purple, minus 28, 30, whatever, 29. And magenta, minus 24. Now, once we're done with that, go to luminance. Luminance, we're going to brighten a few things, darken a few things. The blues, we're gonna darken, and this will actually make the blues a little bit deeper. So let's say minus 23. The oranges, we're gonna brighten to plus 10. The yellows, we're gonna darken to minus nine or 10, perfect. And then the greens, we're going to raise to eight. And this is just adjusting the, the brightness of the colors. Okay, good. Now we are done with the HSL, we're gonna go into the tone curve. So the tone curve you'll notice has the full coverage, like all whites and blacks, everything in between, reds, greens, and blues. We're gonna start with the blues and we're going to create an S curve. Now this S curve, we're gonna put two points here and we're gonna make it a little bit deeper. Let's put another point in the middle and one right here. I'm gonna raise this one just a shade and then we're gonna lower these two here. Just like that and that's gonna make it look really funky. But let's go to green, and we're gonna do a very similar curve, but not as accentuated, just like that. And then let's go to reds, and we're gonna do basically the same curve, just like that. Beautiful, and then let's go into the whites. And this is where we're gonna have kind of a funkier curve. We're gonna put a few points here. We're gonna put one here, we're gonna put one here, we're gonna put one here, and this one here. The first one, the blacks, we're gonna raise up quite a bit. This, the shadows, we're gonna darken just a little bit. We're going to raise this middle point here, and then we're going to lower this one just a shade and lower this one just a shade. Beautiful. So here's the before and after of that. Before, after. Looks kind of aggressive, but that's okay. We have the secret sauce of this entire image. And before I show you that secret sauce, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. That's all. Now I'll show you the secret sauce. <laughs> all right, and the final thing is the masks. So select subject, and then we're going to lower this by minus six, or minus 15, and then we're going to raise the highlights just a bit. All right, and then we're going to select the three dots and click duplicate and invert. And we're gonna lower this and drop the clarity and then we're going to raise the 
warmth a little bit more. There we go. Looking good. Now we're talking. Now let's go back and make one adjustment. The orange is a little too much for me, so I'm actually going to lower it down. And then I'm going to lower this a little bit more here. And that looks good. And there we have it. That is how to quickly and easily edit this style. And it works for almost any setting that you have. Now, if you're ready to save this as a preset, go up to develop, new preset, save it in your presets, check all. I would take off the uh, lens correction, the transform, and the exposure specifically for the when you're saving the preset but then you go ahead and save them in whatever folder. You'll notice I have a lot of presets which are available on my website. And speaking of that, this preset is going to be available on my website soon for a uh, pretty, pretty great price. So go check out my website. I'll link it in the description. But once you've named it here, put it in your group and press create, you have now saved that preset. And if you wanna put this on your Lightroom mobile and you have the full version, cause you need the full version for the presets, I will link two videos in the description on how to do that. But that wraps up this quick video on how to edit this amazing style. I hope to see some cool photos from you. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next week. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy, <laughs> buddy, I don't even know how to start this. How do you even talk to the YouTube channel anymore? Step by step. I forget how to do YouTube videos. How do I do this? Hmm? I forget how to do YouTube videos. <laughs> it's been it's been so long. Ugh, the humanity. How do I how do I talk to a camera again? <laughs>